Murky the baby murloc is a murloc. Murlocs first appeared in Warcraft 3 as neutral monsters, but the race rose to infamy in World of Warcraft. Amongst the first hostile mobs new players will meet, murlocs are known for being found in large groups that aggro easily and have a short respawn timer. <laughs> Over the years, murlocs have come in several forms. Colorful little baby murlocs, the undead murgles, and the deep sea murloc. A tribe of evolved murlocs known as Gorlocks can be found in Northrend, and Pandaren legend tells of a group of murlocs who settled near enchanted pools, evolving into the wise Jinyu. <laughs> One day, little guy. Baby murlocs are highly sought after in the World of Warcraft community, as you can only obtain these rare mini pets through promotional events or attending BlizzCon. Murky, in particular, was offered exclusively at 2005's BlizzCon. Those who pick them up can now put him to use in World of Warcraft's pet battle system. As a specialist, Murky follows in his forebear's footsteps of being killed easily and respawning quickly. He suffers from a slow start, not being able to contribute a lot prior to level 10, but increasing in threat dramatically as the game goes on. Ironically, Murky becomes one of the best 1v1 duelists and is a true late game nightmare, despite wearing a diaper. Murky's trait is Spawn Egg. Murky can build a nest and place an egg anywhere on the map. If, when Murky dies, he'll resurrect at the egg five seconds later. Unlike the standard resurrection timer, this never increases with game length. The downside is that the egg can be destroyed. Destroying the egg pings Murky on the enemy minimap, revealing him no matter where he is. If he's killed during this time, Murky will have to wait the standard amount of time to come back. Murky's Q is Slime. Slime deals a modest amount of damage and leaves enemies with a slimed debuff, slowing them. Using the ability again on slime target significantly increases the damage dealt. W is Pufferfish. Murky throws one of his favorite snacks on the ground. The Pufferfish will slowly inflate over 3 seconds before exploding, dealing high amounts of damage in an area. Enemies can counter this by attacking the pufferfish, destroying it and negating the damage entirely. E is Safety Bubble. Murky's powerful escape tool puts the baby in a bubble. Murky is completely invulnerable for this duration, but can't attack or use any other abilities. Murky's two heroic abilities are March of the Murlocs and Octograb. March of the Murloc sends out a legion of even smaller baby murlocs. These infant murlocs latch onto the first thing they come in contact with, dealing damage over time and slowing them. This ability deals half damage to structures, because you can't deal much damage to magically infused concrete with baby hands. This can be enhanced at level 20 with never ending murlocs, extending the range and duration. Octograb causes several tentacles to bind and completely stun an enemy for 3 seconds, dealing 1 damage every second. If you're interrupted during this ability, the stun will persist on the target. You can also use this ability over walls for some surprising results. At level 20, this can be enhanced with and a Shark 2, increasing the damage by 10,000%. We're going to suggest a build that focuses on enhancing ability power and Murky's W, Pufferfish. The core of this build revolves around Living the Dream, which gives Murky a flat 10% bonus to his ability damage. Every 5 seconds that Murky is alive, he gains an extra 1%, up to a total of 25% bonus ability damage. As mentioned, the rest of the build will take talents buffing Pufferfish where we can, increasing its area of effect, its damage against slimed targets, and causing it to cast slime when used. This gives Murky all the power he needs to blow up minion waves, siege more effectively, and take objectives much more easily. This pufferfish focus also complements our choice of heroic ability, Octograb. This heroic ensures Murky will win just about any 1v1 situation. Cast Slime to set up the slimed debuff, then quickly cast pufferfish and Octograb together. This gives you the benefit of a second stronger Q cast for free with your W, and holds the target firmly in place while the pufferfish inflates. 
At level 20, the easiest option is to simply buff our heroic ability. The alternative is rewind, potentially letting you throw down a pair of puffer fish before stunning with octograb. At level 1, you have to make a situational decision. I generally take bribe and use it to easily deny enemy teams or siege mercs, but you may want to take block to make laning against ranged opponents a bit easier. Play it safe. It's very easy to think that just because you have a reduced death timer and you can resurrect near your lane that you can dive over and over in an attempt to wear your opponents down. Your goal should still be to avoid dying needlessly. Each death still awards the enemy team experience, 25% of a normal death. There's very little for Murky to do in the early game prior to level 10. Getting close enough to slime or melee usually results in an unfavorable trade and many opponents are knowledgeable enough to attack the puffer fish before it's about to explode. In order to wave clear early, you'll have to go in while the pufferfish is priming, forcing your opponent to choose between hitting you or your W. If they ignore you, feel free to get in some damage on the opponent or minion wave before backing off with safety bubble. If they go in on you instead of dealing with the pufferfish, safety bubble early to avoid damage. Keep up this in and out strategy whenever your W and E are off cooldown. Murky will be at a significant disadvantage against aggressive ranged pokers. With long cooldowns on W and E, you're going to have to rely on your lane partner to avoid getting pushed. If you're solo and against an aggressive ranged hero, I'm sorry to hear that, just play safe and try to stay within range to collect experience. Things will get better. Hang in there. Everything changes once you hit level 10. While your W and E do have long cooldowns for basic abilities, your heroic ability will have a surprisingly short cooldown. Time to get aggressive. Use your pufferfish octograb combo to blow up single targets in a cloud of fish guts. Your highest priority are the otherwise intimidating melee damage dealers who tend to dive your team. Your lowest priority should be tanks. Look for opportunities that let you reach any high value targets even slightly out of position. As long as you can ensure they'll die, it's always worth dying to secure even one kill on murky. Similarly, if a low health ally is trying to escape, cover them by slowing pursuers your death timer is going to be way less than theirs. Keep an eye out for your egg being destroyed. If you see a red exclamation mark above your head, stop whatever you're doing to get to safety as quickly as you can. Remember, you're completely revealed to the enemy in the moments after your egg breaks. You should be ready and willing to quickly reposition your egg as the flow of the game changes. Always remember that the enemy team desperately wants to find your egg, and getting caught and killed while your egg is down is the ultimate failure a murky can commit. In the early game, take note of potential egg hunters, especially Nova and Zeratul, who are able to spy behind your walls to find the egg's location. If either of these two are present, it's a good idea to place your egg a little further back. Alternatively, leave it where they expect to find it and keep an eye out, encouraging your lane partner to collapse on the stealth hero when they try to attack it. It's up to you to gauge how far you think it's safe to place your egg. If your team is pushing toward the enemy base, place your egg in the general area you anticipate a fight breaking out. If you're getting pushed back, set up your egg in a safe position while your team regroups, clears waves, and is ready to head out again. What you should always avoid is heading directly toward opponents from your hatch location. An observant opponent can determine where your egg is likely to be based on what direction you're coming from and how long it takes you to return to action after being killed. Always consider relocating your egg after a death to throw off egg hunters. Tomb of the Spider Queen is not a very strong map for Murky. He's not a good candidate for picking up gems unless you're able to turn them in quickly. He is pretty great at interrupting turn ins though. When the Web Weaver spawns, Murky complements the added pushing power to a lane rather nicely, but on the flip side, he doesn't have the sustained damage to take down the Web Weavers very quickly. With limited merc camps on this map, it may be a good idea to substitute block in for bribe. Blackheart's Bay is going to play out similarly to Tomb of the Spider Queen. Murky's not the best candidate for holding onto coins, but he is great at interrupting turn-ins. Murky can also fulfill the PvE camp taker role here pretty well, able to take the skeletons extremely quickly and use bribe to repeatedly swipe your opponent's siege camp out from under them. This will put a lot of coins in your pocket quickly, so be extremely careful when you're at risk of running into enemies. On Sky Temple, Murky isn't going to be able to hold the temple solo for very long, but he is great at dispatching anyone who thinks that they can. 
Remember, the first two temples will spawn at top and mid, and the next one will be at bot. Knowing this, you can position your egg near the temple you want to contest early. If you have the stacks, make sure to use bribe on a siege camp away from the currently spawning temples before heading to contest. On Garden of Terror, Murky makes quick work of the smaller camps but will struggle with the larger Garden Terror without help. Use Murky's low resurrection timer and safety bubble to dive and take seeds from unsuspecting enemies. Murky makes a great candidate for the Garden Terror, able to dive hard and escape with safety bubble, and with low consequences if he dies. Murky's going to struggle on Dragonshire in the early game. While matchups may vary, Murky will have a hard time contesting the shrines prior to level 10. Consider taking up the mid lane instead. Much like the Garden Terror, Murky works out just fine in the Dragon Knight and does well slowing down opponents from activating the shrines themselves. Haunted Mines is one of Murky's strongest maps. He has an extremely easy time clearing the groups of undead and unlike gems or coins, you don't have to worry about getting killed afterwards. Feel free to suicide to steal kills whenever you can. Make sure to leave the mines a little early and sneak over to the enemy side of the map and steal their siege camp from them. This puts a huge damper on the enemy's early defense potential. On Cursed Hollow, the amount of time it takes to capture a tribute gives Murky an easy time interrupting and delaying turn-ins. Make sure you have an egg a safe distance away and repeatedly harass the enemies. With the curse effect, Murky can dispatch waves of enemies even faster than usual and deal some serious damage if left unopposed. Pair Murky up with any other hero with great push potential to completely dominate any one lane, or split them to two solo lanes, freeing up three teammates to handle the remaining one. While any healer will find it's pretty easy to refill Murky's small health pool, Tassiter's shields can keep him from taking damage in the first place, and also allows Murky's naturally high health regen a chance to fill him back up on its own. Psionic Storm also complements Murky's role as a hard pusher. Potentially one of the most annoying combos in the game, Abathur's Hat addresses a lot of Murky's shortcomings early. Sustained Poke and a Durability Shield amongst Abathur's potential buffs. Set up a minefield around Murky's egg, Octo Grab to allow Monstrosity to easily chew on opponents. These two will drive any other team crazy. The biggest direct threat to Murky are heroes that can easily find and destroy his egg. Stealth heroes can snoop behind your defenses without taking any damage. Tyrande's Sentinel also has the potential to destroy your egg from across the map. Murky's weakest period is definitely the several minutes before level 10, usually including the first and often second objective. Ranged heroes have an easy time keeping Murky down before he's in a position to aggressively burst them. These supports are able to completely ruin your burst potential. Getting interrupted during Octograb can actually be beneficial. The effect remains on the opponent while you're free to go, but Cleanse can free your potential victim. Pay close attention to Uther and Brightwing's level 7 talent choices. If they pick Cleanse, you might have little choice but to avoid Octograb that game. Uther can also save your targets with Divine Shield. Lili is a little trickier as you won't know if she takes her Cleanse until level 16. If she does, her Q can cleanse allies every 3 seconds. Thanks for watching our guide on Murky. If you have any tips for using the Baby Murloc, let everyone know in the comments below. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter for channel updates. Want to see our other Heroes of the Storm guides? Click the link to the left.